What is the integral of ln x over rad x dx between 0 and 1? So essentially what makes this problem so hard is two different things. One, in which the limit is between 0 and 1, and we know that if we plug in 0 directly, it would create an uh, undefined solution. And secondly, in which these don't integrate too great, like together because uh, if we took u sub of ln x it would not fully cancel the rad x. So let's first address the integral. So I think that the best way to approach this is by doing integration by parts since these are technically being multiplied or divided by each other and that there is really no other like direct solution. So let's write uh, u equals let's take ln x as u since uh, the Liat rule where you take uh, what is it, logarithms, uh, inverses, etc. first. So you prioritize that as u. And you take du as 1 over x, obviously, because the derivative of ln x is 1 over x dx. Let's take dv to be the rest, which is just uh, 1 over rad x dx. And now this gets kind of annoying since we also have to integrate this term. And uh, let's just do that real quick, the integral of x to the negative one half, that's a algebraically equivalent, dx equals, um, let's see, we just add two halves to that, so it's just x to the one half over one half, which equals two rad x. Well, we don't need the plus c, obviously, so just two rad x. So now we set up the first part of this problem. Now, let me just put this into more tangible terms, since obviously we can't have a zero here. So, we're going to obviously have to take a limit as n approaches what exactly. So if we look at the graph of uh, ln x over rad x, you can see that it looks almost identical to um, just the graph of ln x, right, where it's just one here. But um, let's see here. The thing is, what's important is that as it approaches zero, right, since we already have one, we're assuming ones here, as we're approaching zero, it's going down to negative infinity, so that's going to create a big problem. So which side of negative infinity are we approaching from, the positive or the negative side? Well, from what you can see here, we're going right to left, right? So we're actually approaching negative infinity from the positive side. Thereby, as n approaches 0, or we're saying x equals 0, y would be negative infinity, obviously. So as the limit of n approaches 0 from the plus side, we can now replace the 0 with n. So let me put a parenthesis here for clarification. We got the integral from n to 1 of ln x over rad x dx. So now we can start, we solve the issue in which there was a, uh, you know, undefined problem and we've set up the integration by substitution portion. So now Here's where the fun part kicks in, in which we got to do it within the limit boundaries. So we got to do the limit as n approaches 0 from the plus side of, oh god, this is annoying. So we got to take big parentheses. So as we all know, the integral of parts would be uv minus integral v du. So let's see, u times v is 2 rad x ln x. So let's just put that in brackets for clarification, 2 rad x ln x and we know these are still between the boundaries between n and 1 and now we got to subtract the integral between again n and 1 of v du so let's see what's v 2 rad x again du is 1 over x so it becomes 2 rad x over x dx there we go this will contain our solution and now we're just going to be uh, picking it apart little by little. So I won't do this part out yet because it'll just take up way too much space. So first, let's simplify this portion before we integrate. So this will equal limit of an approaching 0 from the plus side of 2 rad x ln x between n and 1 minus the integral. We can see here that... Uh, we have a rad x over x, right? So this would actually simplify into 2 over rad x, right? So we just get 2 over rad x, because remember this is x to the 1 
that is x to the one half, so you subtract one half dx. Oh, isn't this fun? Look at that. So now let's integrate this portion. Uh, we have to rewrite it algebraically. I'm not going to rewrite this, just assume it's there. So we got negative uh, integral of 2 times x to the negative 1 half dx. So uh, we assume that 2 is a constant. We move it over there. So that would be negative 2 times, well, x to the negative 1 half. You're going to have to bring that up a power, so plus 1 or two halves will then become x to the one half positive over one half. Uh, we don't need the plus c since it's still within these boundaries. So if we multiply this term by two, that'll cancel the denominator and we get negative two times two, which is negative four rad x. So that is actually going to be the semi solution for this term, but we still gotta remember to put in the boundaries later. So let's plug that back in, you got the limit as n approaches 0 from the plus side of uh, 2 rad x ln x. Yeah, see this running gets a little cumbersome after a while. Now, uh, we already have the minus, so let's put that on the outside, minus 4 rad x, and now we have to reapply the boundaries between n and 1. And now it gets a little more easier to comprehend. All we got to do now is start plugging in these terms and subtracting them out. So uh, let me, I'm going to clear out this workspace and I'll write this back at the top. Okay, I just rewrote what we had here and now let's start doing this thing out. So this will equal, let's see, again we're just going to have to keep writing the limit sign to make sure it's you know within that boundary. Let's plug in the top term. So 2 times rad x will be uh, 2 times rad 1, and that's just 2. So let's write that. So 2 times ln of 1, which will be 0, but let's just write it down. And then we subtract the uh, n. So let's do 2 rad n ln n. That will create a problem for us later. But for now, let's just write that down. Now we're going to have to subtract this entire term. So it'll be minus parentheses. 4 rad 1 is just 4 minus 4 rad n. So now let's do a little bit of simplification. We know that ln 1 is 0 and that uh, we can't really plug in 0 here for n yet or like we're assuming that this is 0 0.00 infinitely 1 because uh, this will be a case of L'Hopital's rule. Here, we can actually plug in that number, which will essentially equal zero. We can't do it, remember, we can't do it here because there will be a little bit of a disparity. So let's write limit of n approaching zero from the plus side of negative two rad n ln n. Sorry, I'm just, uh, mixing up the lowercase and capital ends because um, I mean it's the same thing. So minus 4 and that's it. We can bring this minus 4 on the other side actually so let's do that real quick. Now that we have the minus 4 on the outside due to it being unaffected by the limit this is where the annoying part comes in. So let's assume that we do plug in the 0 right? So this is negative 2 times rad point zero 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 one this will eventually equal zero so as a graphic uh elaboration we're assuming that we're almost to negative infinity or we're almost to zero x equals zero which would be negative infinity so this is essentially zero but what would this be so ln of zero is undefined since it'll actually never hit you know negative infinity or anything so uh let's assume that it does hit uh infinity and since there's a negative it'll be negative times infinity doesn't matter we can see that this is an application of l'hopital's because with l'hopital you can apply it to three different things either zero over zero infinity over infinity or zero times infinity we have the latter case here so now uh we'll just throw this negative four to the side till the end of the problem so eventually there will be two outcomes to this either a that it uh 
becomes undefined and then we'll call this divergent or b it could equal zero or a finite number and that will be a convergent solution so now let's rearrange this to be equal to limit of n approaching from the plus side of now here's kind of a weird thing we're going to have to turn it into a fractional form so that it would be easier you know to apply L'Hopital's rule right because it's zero times infinity so let's keep the l and n at the top and put that over you know the reciprocal of this which would just be uh, 1 over negative 2 rad n now we can take the individual derivatives of both of these I'll just denote it by that because I'm not going to put a parenthesis around them uh, and minus 4 obviously now let's write the limit again as n approaches 0 from the plus side. The, the derivative of l and n will simply just be 1 over n, and that will be over the derivative of this term. So taking the derivative of that term, we could do a negative 1 half times n to the negative 1 half, since it is on the denominator side and it is a square root, explaining the negative 1 half as the exponent. So now, uh, move that forward, we get negative one-half times one-half, negative one-half, and that will equal one-fourth positive. N, bring that down by a power of one, so that's negative one-half minus two-halves, which is negative three-halves. This will equal one over four times N to the three-halves. Let's just keep it at that for now. We don't need to elaborate any further. So now let's put that back down here. 1 over 4 n to the 3 halves. Now I'm going to clear out this board so we can do the final portion. So now we got to uh, do a little bit of uh, algebraic rearranging. We got 1 over n times 4 n to the 3 halves over 1. We can now rearrange these two fractions into 4 n to the 3 halves over n. It's the same thing as that. And we can see it, uh, the ends actually can simplify again to be uh, 4 n to the 1 half, since this is just n to the 2 over 2, which is equivalent to 1. And you're subtracting that from 3 halves, which would give you 4 n to the 1 half. So now let's put the limit back down. Uh, limit as n approaches 0 from the plus side of 4 n to the 1 half. Don't forget that minus 4 from before. And now let's see what happens. So essentially, we almost got 0 to the 1 half, which works out because that will just be 0. So if it were still in the denominator, this would be no solution. But fortunately for us, it is a solution. So 4 times 0 equals 0. So look at that. We didn't even need this whole term. The solution is minus 4. This is what the integral converges to. Let me write converges. There is no plus c, again, because uh, we wrote a definite integration. So this, again, is a solution to uh, the integral between 0 and 1 of ln x over rad x dx. If you have any questions about how I did this or how I approached it, please put it in the comments below. And good luck.